In this tutorial, I show you how I create a class module and some examples of how I make use of them. If you're viewing this tutorial anywhere other than businessprogrammer.com, there's a blog post that goes along with this, which will add some extra detail. It's at businessprogrammer.com forward slash VBA hyphen class hyphen module hyphen example. Enjoy. So first let's insert a class module. Go to insert and scroll down to class module. As you can see a default class module called class one now appears under class modules. We'll need to customize this later. An essential element of setting up your project is making sure that option explicit is at the top of your module. Click on tools, then go to options. Then on the editor tab, click on require variable declaration, then OK. Now setting option explicit only works with new modules created from now on. So I'm going to have to manually type in option explicit at the top of this module. Option explicit ensures that variables must be declared before they are used. So if you don't declare a variable and you use it, it the system will throw an error. This protects you from bugs creeping into your program due to typos on variables. A different video can explain all the details of this. Let's build out this class module now. First, I'm going to enter the properties. As you can see, these are descriptors of the class, which will become an object such as brand, fuel type, etc. Now I'm using a quick and dirty method of building out properties here, as I often find with tutorials you can be overloaded with information if the topic is taught in too much depth to begin with. Just know there is a more secure way of adding properties to a class using functions known as property procedures. So right now I've added five properties to the class, that being brand, model, fuel type, engine size and doors. Notice that they're all declared as public because they need to be seen outside of the class and when the class is working it will be called an object so these will describe the car object when it's created. So now it's time to add methods to the class. The properties were basically variables. Now methods are functions and subroutines. They're basically mini programs. So the methods are the verbs of the object. So start engine, stop engine, break, go faster. Methods being mini programs make the object do things, whereas the properties store values of the objects and store they're basically like memory keys on a calculator, I guess, just like variables. I'm just doing very basic methods, so uh, in reality you would fill in your own code and the code can be as simple or as complex as the job requires. All that remains to do now is to rename class 1 to CLS car class car. Now it just remains to add the standard module. So choose insert module and let's name this module lowercase m main. Lowercase m standing for module and in the case of the class module CLS standing for class. So it's time to use the class that we've now created. So we're going to go into the standard module m main and write a procedure. Let's call it test cars. Now we're going to declare our first car object, my Chrysler, as CLS car. Notice that um, the class appears in the IntelliSense. Here we're also creating a Ford, which is using the same class car. And we create sisters, Range Rover, which is like my sister has a Range Rover. And that again is a class car. We've told Visual Basic that uh, these three variables are class car objects but we have not yet created them. In order to create these actual object instances, we need to use the new keyword. So for example, set my Chrysler equals new class car. That's where we actually create the object in memory. We've created an empty Chrysler car object, but now we need to build it up. We're using the width statement, we'll access some of its properties. 
we'll set its brand, and the brand, of course, will be Chrysler. Then we'll set its model, which in this instance is Voyager. Fuel type, of course, is diesel. And the engine size in this instance is 2.8 litre. And of course, all Chrysler Voyagers have five doors, including the rear. To save time, I've added in some extra code here, which we can step through as I'm explaining it. The uh, boxed area is just a duplicate of the previous Chrysler car, except this is for the sister's Range Rover with some different details filled out. The blue box contains code where you can see I'm querying the object. So for example, remember each of these objects calls the same class module, but nonetheless, my Chrysler.model and Sisters Range Rover.model will give totally different answers, showing, I guess you could say, the magic of classes and objects. So we're going to step through the My Chrysler object right now and expands the variables of the locals window. So here you can see that Chrysler contains a brand of Chrysler, doors 5, engine size 2.8 litre, etc. So in this instance, you can see that the actual class contains, the, or holds the variables in memory. So the, you can see the Chrysler object created in the locals window and also the sister's Range Rover object created here. But the property of brand has Land Rover for one, Chrysler for another, uh, three liter for sister's Range Rover and um, 2.8 liter engine size in the Chrysler, etc. So this is also an example of how useful the locals window is when you wish to examine variables and debug code. We're going to step through the class by continuously pressing the F8 key. First of all, we go to mychrysler.startengine, but you'll notice that we're actually stepping through class car. So I'm going to step out through the rest of the code now, so you'll see me stepping through various methods and message boxes popping up. We're covering two different objects here, both the mychrysler object and the sister's Range Rover object. Just observe how the code steps through the class module in these instances and that's it pretty much hey thanks for listening if you found this tutorial interesting and you're not watching it on businessprogrammer.com why not head over to businessprogrammer.com pop your details into the email box and i'll be sure to send you an update whenever i launch a new video or tutorial bye for now